Euler is contained within Maxwell's equation. So, so this is Gauss's law for magnetism. That's just the one that says that um, magnetic monopoles can't exist. So you need magnetic dipoles. And then, and then basically if you move away, the magnetic field is in a closed loop, um, away from the dipoles. Even in, even in a full plane wave of sunshine, it's just a loop with a radius of infinity. Okay, so uh, people forget that, that even though we're looking at plane wave assumptions as you know flat planes, it's still it's still a loop involved with the magnetic field. Okay, um, so yeah, this is the magnetic field. This is Gauss's law. So that's uh, just saying that um, charges act as sources and sinks for electrical fields. Um, this is the electric field flux density, and that's the electric charge density. Um, this is Ampere's law. Um, that's that's the easiest one. That's just saying that. You know, moving current will induce um, a cooling magnetic field around it. And this is Faraday's law. This is the one we're going to be using after this. This is the one that just says that moving magnetic field will induce the current. Okay. So, so before we get into the maths, there's some very important assumptions that we take into consideration and do magnetic theories when we derive from mathematics. Um, so this one, the source fields. All source fields are vertically incident plane waves at the Earth's surface. So all the source energy that we get is considered to be a plane wave and vertically incident. Okay. So the first thing about plane waves is because our source is on the ionosphere, which is 120 kilometers above us. Okay? So that then you know, the plane wave assumption that end up being plane waves when they reach the surface. And then the vertical incidence. Basically you think about um, the conductivity of the Earth and the conductivity of the air. There's such a large difference that any incident wave or will refract to the vertical. So even though if it comes at, a, at an oblique angle, once it hits the surface, it will ref reflect, ref refract 90 degrees vertical. Okay, mm -hmm. just because of the contrast between the air and the earth's surface. Okay, that's one of the assumptions we make when we do the mathematics. Okay. Um, yeah. So the next one, Earth only di dissipates or absorbs the energy it does not generate it, which is here and there because there is some evidence that. You get some ionization, but that's one of the assumptions. Um, yeah, the Earth acts like a conductor that obeys Ohm's law. That's pretty simple. Um, displacement currents are negligible compared to induction currents. So, what we're saying here is that any current produced on a molecular level with rocks is not going to be as intense as the inducing current from the magnetic field. So, we ignore the displacement currents that would naturally be there. Okay? So, the inducing currents are always stronger. Um, for magnetic fields, okay. Uh, yeah, so when to charges in the ball conductor, the electrical permittivity and the magnetic permeability is negligible. So if you look at the conductivity of this structure, compared to the constants of magnetic permeability and the electrical, uh, magnetic permeability and electrical permittivity, it's very, very small, like 10 to the negative something. And if you look at the conductivity, it's a lot larger, okay. So they are negligible when we, we, we work with mathematics. 